Hey guys, and welcome to another Sunday School lesson with Buck Run Kids. I am so excited that you're here again, and I hope you have your Bible with you. Did you bring your Bible this week? Well, this is the fourth time that I've been with you, and so hopefully you brought your Bible. We've talked about it. For whatever reason, every time I sit down with my kids to watch Sunday School, we sit down, we hit play, and it's like, oh, who forgot our Bible? So we get up and we, uh, we grab them. So if you need a second to go do that, then go grab it. Today we're going to be in John chapter 11. And we're going to be talking about a guy named Lazarus. Maybe you've heard about Lazarus. But if uh, also if you have your Bible, like we're going to start everything, we're going to talk, talk about our key passage. Do you remember where that was? you remember go eat popcorn? Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians... And Colossians. We're going to be in Colossians looking at our key passage, and that's in chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. If you want to turn there, that'd be awesome. It's always a good exercise to be able to find stuff in your Bible. Again, I would remind you, we talked about this early on, but if you don't know where a book is, you can always go to the very beginning of the Bible. You can look at that table of contents. You can find the name of the book that you're looking for. It'll tell you the page that it's on, and you can try and flip there. So it's always good to kind of get an idea of where stuff is. That's why I, would, I like having a single Bible for a long time, because you can almost kind of learn where stuff is based on, like, all oh, this is more towards the middle. If I always turn to the middle and then just go to the right a little bit, this is here, this is there. And uh, anyway, it's kind of a cool thing. But... You'll see right now I'm using an iPad. All you do there is type it in and you go straight to it. Either way, it's God's word. It's good. And uh, so let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Let's read that. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to, hit, to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of of sins. Let's read that one more time. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now today we're going to read about somebody that maybe seemed like they were in a really bad position and they were transferred from that position into one where people could see. Lazarus dies today in the story. If you don't know what happens, we'll see what happens. But there was a, a way that it seemed to be God transferred him. And an illustration is, now we can see this as a way it illustrates that he, uh, what happened as it relates to this verse. But let's also think about our big picture question. Big picture question that we're talking about each week is how does God care for his creation? God loves and rules over his creation according to his perfect plan. When God created the world, there was no death. Adam and Eve were made to not die. When they sinned, death entered into the world. So part of God's, part of God's creation, was he did not make us to know evil and to know death. And so in today's story, we'll see a way where we get a picture in how God's perfect plan. But God's always working his plan and he will bring us into his perfect plan in what we call the consummation. That is the end of time. God will make all these things new again. And in today's story, like I said, we'll see a death. But because of Jesus and what Jesus done, we know this to be temporary. So... If you got your Bible, you can turn to John 11. I'm going to tell you the story. It's all there. You can see it there. You can check it. And uh, again, you can always turn back to Colossians chapter 1 and read our key passage. So Jesus had a friend. I hope you have a friend. Do you have a friend? I've got some of the best friends in the entire world. I like to be with them. And um, I've had friends that have moved away. And I've got several friends that are missionaries across the world. And when they left, I was very sad. And Jesus had a friend, and Jesus' friend was named Lazarus. All right, he had lots of friends. This is one of them. And Lazarus lived in a little town 
called Bethany, or in Jesus lived in the town of Bethany in Judea with Jesus' sisters, Mary and Martha. And one day, Lazarus got sick. Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus and said, Jesus, your friend Lazarus is sick. This was, wouldn't have been easy for you and I to send a text or an email. They went to links to get this message to Jesus. And Jesus told his disciples, he said this, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. Interesting. The sickness will bring glory to God in the Son of God. So think about that. Jesus told his disciples this, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. Jesus stayed where he was for two more days. Now think about that. Mary and Martha send a letter to Jesus saying, Jesus, your friend Lazarus is sick. We need help. And then Jesus hears this and stays where he is for two more days. I don't know what the people around him would have been thinking, but I would have thought, Jesus, don't you want to go to where this is? Then Jesus says, well, let's go back to Judea. By the time Jesus arrived in Bethany, Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. So he had been buried, dead and buried for four days. Martha hurried to meet Jesus, right? Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, this would not have happened. Now, maybe when I hear that, I can think, oh, wow, this just seems so disrespectful to Jesus. But what Mary is saying, she says, Jesus, we know you were able to do miracles. We know you would have been able to save Lazarus. She's acknowledging that Jesus has the power over death. Even before his resurrection, she knows that who, this is who Jesus is. Right? Martha knew that Jesus could do a miracle. Jesus replied, your brother will rise again. Martha believed that Lazarus would rise for in the future on the last day. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he says, do you believe this? Yes, Lord, Martha said, I, I believe this. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. But Martha went back to her house. And she told Mary that Jesus wanted to see her. Mary left the house and all the people that had come to comfort Mary and Martha, they followed her. Mary goes and she falls at Jesus' feet in sadness. Right? She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Mary cried. You know who else cried? Jesus cried. Maybe you've heard this verse because it's notably the shortest verse in all of the Bible. Jesus wept. You can memorize a verse today. You can memorize that. Jesus wept. But he did. It's not just the shortest verse. It's an impactful verse because Jesus looking around, seeing the sorrow of the people that he loved, they, they felt that. They, they were experiencing that. And Jesus felt that in his heart too. And he cried. And I've got to step aside and say, when you have sadness, God knows. One of my favorite verses in all of the scripture talks about God keeping our tears in a bottle. That he knows every tear that we shed, every time that we're sad, every bit of sorrow that we have, God knows. And Jesus knew here and he cared and he wept. He cried seeing all this. He cried because they were sad. Mary, she led Jesus to the tomb where Lazarus was buried. It was a cave and had a huge stone covering the entrance to the cave. And Jesus simply looked at the stone and said, and looked at them and said, remove the stone. As the stone was rolled back, Jesus cries out to God in prayer and says, thank you, God, that you have heard me. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus obeyed. 
Lazarus, who had been dead in the tomb for four days, comes walking out. I don't know what he would have looked like. I don't know what it would have smelled like. But I can imagine the joy on the people's faces when they saw Lazarus walk out of that tomb. That was an amazing miracle of Jesus. Jesus saw the need of them. I think of all the layers of this, right? You think, what would the disciples have thought when Jesus said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death? And then he died. Then Lazarus died. They would have probably wondered, was surely, and we know Jesus isn't wrong. Was he, did he miss this? Was he wrong here? Well, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. But ultimately, Lazarus, he's not still alive today, right? We, we would have certainly met Lazarus if he had lived this entire time. Well, he ended up dying. But Jesus, in his faithfulness, he did raise Lazarus from, from the dead, but he gave Lazarus what we talked about last week, this his greatest need, forgiveness, that results in eternal life. And what's incredible there is Jesus was doing these miracles. He was acknowledging, the thing I'm going to do here is what's going to bring honor and glory to God and the Son of God. And that's what he does in your life. When we put our faith and trust in him, he gives us life. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and the new has come. Another scripture says we are another scripture says we are dead in our trespasses and sins. We've talked about this at, at Buckram before. What can a dead man do? Absolutely nothing. Jesus makes us alive in Christ. Jesus ultimately has the power over all sin and death. Jesus showed us his power over death when he raised Lazarus from the grave. When he said, you're not dead anymore, you're alive. But Jesus' greatest picture of having power over sin and death was when he conquered death in his own death, his sinless life. He lived that sinless life that you and I could not live. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he was in the ground for three days and he was raised forever. And he now sits alive next to God, the Father in heaven. And he's able to help us. So Jesus has the power over death. He expressed that in Lazarus, but more perfectly, he expressed it in his own death, burial, and resurrection. Because unlike Lazarus, Jesus is still alive today. That's how he can help us. Lazarus can't help us. He was, he was resurrected, but he's not alive today. Jesus is. And we trust in what he's accomplished on our behalf in his perfect life, his death, burial, resurrection. We can have eternal life. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful for how you love us in the things that you've provided for us, the things that you've shown us in your perfect word. We are grateful that you have power over death, that we can trust you and what you've done and know that you will take us to heaven. It isn't what we've done. It isn't what we can do. It's only you. Because spiritually, before Christ, we are dead. We have no power to do anything in and of ourselves. We have to trust in what you have done. So Lord, give us uh, the life that we need through Christ. Help us to trust in his saving power. Put our trust in what he has accomplished in him alone. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next time with Buck Ryan Kids.